always be in love with a lion of the tribe of Judah because that is your source. And so just a little short little look at my outfit. This is the oriental look, sort of Japanese rather than Chinese in terms of the raglan sleeves. And we'll talk more about that. But today we're doing rule number three, which is pay as you enter. This week we have been talking about physical health and how you can retain and regain your physical health. And so we're going to be looking at rule number three. But let's just do a little review. First of all, we are doing all the aspects of physical health as it relates to our four rules. And our four rules are, one, know where you're going. Two, know your driver. Three, pay as you enter. And four, celebrate life. Celebrate the journey. Enjoy the ride. So today, as we look at pay as you enter, we have to understand what does that mean? It means that you have to put in your part. You have to, oh, it's so hot in here. I wonder what happened to my fan. You have to do your part and make sure that you make a contribution. It doesn't matter what you're involved in. You need to make sure you put in your part. So it's not anything about paying at the end. It is at paying at the beginning. Why is that so important? It follows the principle of sowing and reaping. You always have to give as much as you have at the beginning and then you can reap at the end. I showed you the analogy of the corn. And if you plant one grain of corn, you're likely to get a stalk with maybe three, four, five ears of corn. Each ear of corn, I counted them, the ones I counted, had between 350 and 490 grains of corn on one stalk, which means from one stalk, you can get a thousand, two thousand or more grains. And while there's a principle that says you need to sow 10% of whatever you reap, that's one concept. But if you really want a massive return, then you do you do what is called the whole of the first fruits. That means your first reaping, your first grain, your first stalk. You plant that everything on it. Can you imagine how much corn you get at the end? That's the principle. And we're going to be talking about that further on when we look at financial management and debt reduction and how you get back to the place of being financially free where not only do you have no liabilities, but you always have excess to give away to those who are in need. So let's get right into it. Pay as you enter in our physical health section. Well, now, one of the principles, and remember where we get our principles from, they all come from our operations manual. And that is my angel, this is who I identify with. I am a messenger bringing information from the book to you. And so anything you want to find out is in this book. And every situation is encoded in it. So stick with us and you will be flying high on the real stuff. So pay as you enter. Yesterday, we decided that it is so very, very important for you to understand God as a driver because he's the one who planned it. He's the one who's going to execute it. He's the one whose principles you have to use in order to get this plan to work perfectly. And so we looked at the fact that your creator has a plan for you. And it is Jeremiah 29 11. And it says, 
I don't want to have a plan for every moment of your life for you to prosper and have a successful time. And guess what? In it, there is no harm or no hurt. Can you imagine living your life like that? Isn't it it's possible? It's possible because guess what? I have been doing it for quite a while. Not continuously now, but I know how to get back on track every time I fall off the wagon. So that's what I want to share with you so that you can do the same thing too. So, pay as you enter. It, first of all, now at the beginning is when you must pay. Don't wait until you get down the road. You know, there are some buses you pay when you're coming out. Uh, 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 uh. Those buses have a lot of problems. You know, like our road taxis. There are times when dancers and criminals take the taxi. And when they get to the end, I've been in, in a taxi with people like that. And when you get to the end and you're set, and when the driver, it's a one stop driver, and the driver stop and let them out. And it said to them, What happened to this here? Then just said, and just pat them back where the gun is. And the driver just had to shut up their mouth. Now, if they had to pay when they came in, then they wouldn't have that problem. Right? God, this is a problem that is very widespread in this country. But we're getting it straight now. So when people understand that they need to pay as you enter, and this is a principle of every kind of business, and you follow it, these principles work every time. So what do you have to pay in about your health? What? You have to start today. You have your people, oh, I'm going on a diet. I'm going to change this. I'm going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. You must start today. No. I remember when I first read that book that said, Why Christians Get Sick. It is something that used to really bother me for years and years and years. And I remember some wonderful missionaries who would die of lung cancer and they did not smoke. And I used to say, God, how did this happen? And he would say, I said, my word to heal them. I said, you mean they didn't use the word? He said, no, they didn't use the word. And so I used to think that it was to use the word meant that you took a word of the Bible and you said, be healed in Jesus' name. And it didn't happen. I thought something didn't work. But he says, no, that's not the way. Remember what I said yesterday? Information is just having it in your head. Knowledge is having an experience of seeing it work. And so, people who have information and try and use it, don't happen. He says you are to eat the word, digest it, get what is good out of it, active in your system. Hey, you will see the results. But guess what? My people perish for lack of knowledge. What knowledge are they lacking here in this case? The knowledge that he gave, the perfect way and lifestyle that he gave in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 and 29. It says, I have given you authority and power over every beast of the field, every fowl of the air everything that creepeth upon the earth and then he said you are to have these things in order to rejuvenate you at the cellular level that's in the bible it sure is and it says in order to reverse all your conditions from the nutritional deficiency point of view all that is in your you know you must make sure that everything you eat has a seed and you've got to eat it in its original state. What? Everything that has a seed? Yes. Kalalu seed and pakcho seed and tomato seed and 
beetroot seed. You know beetroot seed? It sure does. In the blue. Remember that you have a blue in the foliage. Foliage, then bloom, then seeds. The root is a totally different thing, right? But that is where the rejuvenating force is, and th that is what is going to change your own. So, anytime you have those things that have little fine seeds, do you know what is the most potent way to use them? Those little seeds like cow seeds and hemp seeds and those seeds we take the seeds and just sprinkle a few on your food you'll get all the life force out of it but remember when you start to put fire to it when you will burn it bake it or boil it you kill the life force so remember you got to start now. That's number one. And number two, you make sure that what you're putting into your system is 100% pure nutrition. Good. All right. So you got to do it now. Start now. I read this book, Why Christians Get Sick. And when I found out that I am poisoning myself, and that is why I'm getting sick. And my dear, myself and my late husband, we went in the kitchen. I got out four of those big garbage bags, you know, the ones that are, we call drum liners. And we started pulling down stuff out of our cupboards and putting it in there, all the tin stuff, all the box of this, and, and everything we have. Full of those, full of groceries. Three of them were with groceries. You know what was in the fourth one? The two microwaves. And everything was carted out and put outside the gate on the sidewalk. When our housekeeper came in the morning, she said, all these things on the sidewalk. She says, what is that? She came inside, she says, oh, oh, this is how the, the microwaves are on the sidewalk. What happened? They burn up? We said, no, but they are to be burnt up. She says, can I get have them? She said, I said, you want to take them? Take them. But I'm not giving them to you. Right? And she went out there and tackled she wanted all the big things. And that's fine. But guess what? You must make a decision for yourself. If anybody else doesn't want to come along with you, don't watch your face. You make sure that you have made a decision and you are going to carry it out. Because you have to take responsibility for yourself. And nobody is responsible for your decisions. That's number one rule of being an adult. You take responsibility for your decisions. You can't say that the devil made you do it because you have a choice at all times. So, do it now, take responsibility, and then there is a process. And the process is using that same acronym that we use, right? It says, ask, seek, knock, right? Ask. And you need to know, ah, oh, you have not because you ask not. Seek. You have to research if you want. You know, the issue is, is that, First of all, you have to ask. You want something? Ask for it. That's what the operation manual says. Secondly, seek. What does seek mean? You've got to do some research. What does the manual say about nutritional deficiencies? It says that in order to have a balanced nutrition, you need the five elements of life. You need fresh air, Pure water, sunshine, earth foods, and PEMS. And I want to tell you, I just put up on my website today a fantastic research paper on PEMS. It talks about how we get energy and electricity into our bodies. 
by walking on the ground outside. But in addition to walking on the ground outside barefooted, then you have the opportunity of getting all the PEMFs that you need from fresh air, pure water, sunshine, and earth foods. So if you're having those four, you don't need to do that. But if you still energize it, de-energize. Then just hang it outside, walk around on the dirt and the grass, and it all comes right up and balances everything in your body. You ever wonder why these people walk barefoot and don't work in the soil are so healthy? They get in a constant source of energy coming up through their skins. And so you don't have to go and get a treatment. I have a chi machine and I have reflexology machines and I have far infrared machines and I have energy beds. I have all these machines that people who spend all their time inside at work have to come and use. But why would you want to do that when you could do it yourself by yourself? Take a break. See you back in two shakes of an upstairs. Since the first public demonstration of radio by Nikola Tesla in 1893, no one ever thought of putting the two hours of music together until we created reggae to reggaecom On reggae to reggaecom we encourage our listeners with an inclusive, intelligent, and innovative alternative media experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure that the hair don't fall down because I forgot to put any pins in there. So, but it's still up, and we'll just call it good for the time being. Okay, so we're talking about PEMFs. I'm talking about this PEMFs, and I didn't remember to tell you that it means pulse electromagnetic fields. And is all the energy that electricity, people call it electricity, some people call it energy, that comes from the earth. And it's a perfect balance for the electrical charges that we need in our body for it to remain alkaline. And you know, there are lots of machines that will give you this if you are not able to do it naturally. But of course, remember that the natural way is always the best way. And so we encourage you to walk on the ground outside if you feel that you're de-energized. One of the best ways to get it back. Other ways to get it back is to make sure that you have fresh air, that you have pure water, that you have a good amount of sunshine. And we look at quantities tomorrow and that you have PEMX and earth foods, right? So remember that the earth foods have to come in in a certain quantity for you to know that it is going to be effective. Now, what quantities and how much of each? Now remember that we had a food pyramid when we were at school. I don't use that food pyramid, you know why? It was produced by the Dairy Farmers Association of the world. Either in America or in Sweden or somewhere, you can find print on the bottom of the chart and you will see compliments of the people who want to push their products. And guess what? It is in every school manual and it is in every medical school manual. That is what we have been taught all along from when books were printed. But before books were printed, guess what was the food pyramid that we used to use successfully and never got sick? This is it. Vitamins, 
minerals, protein, chlorophyll, and enzyme. That's the food pyramid that is in the book. The book that is done by the creator. So that is the one I use. Because if you use the other one that has in all the stuff from certain manufacturers, then you'll call it out. Because all you'll be doing is constantly buying their products. And then you won't ever get to your end, intended end, which is to live healthy, to be healed, and to continue in divine health. So let's look at the pyramid now. One of the things you need to understand, those, again, five areas or five elements, vitamins, minerals, protein, chlorophyll, and enzymes, are in everything in the plant and animal kingdoms that has life, absolutely essential to life. So if you cut a piece of calorie, it has, when you eat it, vitamins, minerals, protein, chlorophyll, and enzymes. I don't want to use callaloo. For those who are not familiar with callaloo, you can use spinach or colored greens or any very green, deep green, leafy plant. And this is what they have. All plants. But I'm going to do a little analysis on callaloo. Vitamins, minerals, protein, chlorophyll, and enzymes. Why is it whenever you go on a healthy diet, they talk about having greens? And most people who don't like the taste of greens. They don't like the taste of greens. But let me tell you how I have liked greens. Whether it is in in uh, powder form or liquid form. I just put it in two ounces of cane juice, two ounces of purified water, and my greens. And it is just absolutely delicious. Why cane juice? Because cane is a cross. So it is compatible with it. Oh, but you didn't remember that. Cane is a grass. It's not a fruit. It's not a vegetable, it's a grass. So I do all my greens that uh, I am still getting accustomed to the taste after 20 odd years in cane juice and pure water. And then it goes down wonderfully smooth. Back to the greens. We're analyzing calorie today to make you understand that all the nutrients that you need in the right proportions are the color. Uh-huh. I know what you're going to ask me now. Where do I get my protein from color? Do you know that there is a more usable uh, protein and absorbable and beneficial protein in color? than in a one pound steak. That is in one pound of calorie as against one pound of steak. I'm here to tell you. Remember what he said yesterday about protein in, in cows? The protein in the cow produces in anybody who has any kind of dairy products. The same TNA and RNA of a cow. And who wants to have that? Protein in dairy products. Listen to this. Is four to ten times the amount of protein that a human being needs. And that is terrible because it makes 
Your body grew nice and big and bulky and muscular. And guess what? It shrinks your brain to a little teeny weeny weeny size. You need to go and research that information and find out if I am not telling you the truth because I got it out of this. One blood, one kind of Ha ha ha! The life is in the blood. And so the only way that we can benefit from the plants is to get the life force out of the plants. And what is the life force? Uh -huh. Just like how we have blood in the human and animal kingdom, we have chlorophyll in the plant kingdom. How do we know that it works as blood? It has the same molecular structure when you break it down as the human hemoglobin in our bloodstreams. Isn't that awesome? Where do you think the cow gets so much blood from? You ever seen a cow being slaughtered? or any other animal that feeds on green. You ever see when I saw that? Whoa, blood just a flow. That's because chlorophyll is like blood to the animal kingdom when it is eaten in the plant form. Let me say that again. Chlorophyll, which is the blood for the plant, gives the same richness of blood too. <laughs> I have to share this with you. To the human being, let me finish that. You know why I just thought about ha ha ha? Because that is why if you are on dialysis or you are on any kind of autoimmune disease treatment or any kind of blood disorder treatment, the doctors tell you that you mustn't have greens because it gives you too much iron and thickens your blood. That's not true. Cavalo cannot have too much iron. It has the right amount. And this misinformation that has been circulating gives people the impression that when you're eating Cavalo, all you're doing is biting iron. Cavalo has all the vitamins I need, all the minerals I need, all the protein I need, all the chlorophyll I need, and all the enzymes I need, if eaten in its raw state or as a raw juice. It is my major source of protein. It is my major source protein. It is my major source of protein. How do I know that it is giving me enough protein? Because the things that have the most protein grow the fastest. I repeat, the plants that have the most protein double their size and grow the fastest. I am going to link that now to another situation in the human arena, but understand that the things that grow slowly are the things that have less protein. The things that grow, you have a plant, hello, and you come outside, you see not next month you come outside, let's see, this, and then next morning you come outside, you see this? Ha! Ah, ah. Now you understand why Calolo has a lot of protein. So, the information I'm going to be sharing with you on this program is not about stuff that you have to go and be, have a PhD to understand. It is what God put in his book right here, so for everybody to understand. And this is why he sent this angel to tell me. And this is why more angel is telling you. So remember the tuning. 
practice every day from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock to make sure that you hear this vital information from the operations manual. Back to the calorie now. It's important that you understand. Maybe, let me take a break. I'm going to take a break and then we will come back and talk a little bit more. On reggae to reggaecom we encourage our listeners with an inclusive, intelligent, and innovative alternative media experience. On reggae to reggaecom we encourage our listeners with an inclusive, intelligent and innovative alternative media experience. On reggae to reggaecom we encourage our listeners with an inclusive, intelligent and innovative alternative media experience. On reggae to reggaecom we encourage our listeners with an inclusive, intelligent, and innovative alternative media experience. Since the first public demonstration of radio by Nikola Tesla in 1893, no one ever thought of putting the two hours of music together until we created reggae to reggaecom Yes. Kalalo and the human body, or spinach, or colored greens, or any green tops from beetroots, or from carrots, all of these green tops, don't throw them away. You are to juice them and get the chlorophyll. There's chlorophyll in the, in the carrot and the beetroot, you know. But more is in the greens. The greener the green, the more chlorophyll you will get into your system. No, I was talking about the reason why they don't want you to have the um, calorie if you are on certain medical procedures. Because if you have calorie or greens generally, it will build up the hemoglobin in your blood. And if you are not having enough water in your system, then your blood will appear to be thicker, right? And so they, guess what? It clogs up the dialysis machine if you don't drink enough water. So if you are on dialysis, my recommendation is you are free to take what decisions you want to take. You are an adult, it's your constitutional right. My recommendation is that you choose the calendar or the colored greens, and you can have up to five servings of green a day in order to keep your blood in perfect condition. That's what I do with my cancer patients. That's what I do with persons who have any kind of blood condition. That's how I reverse leukemia, sickle cell anemia, and all blood disorders. Five green servings a day. But you must have your 12 cups of water a day so that you don't get the blood too thick and they won't know. It won't clog up the machine. But what you'll be doing is reversing your condition as you go through. And one day, when you go and do your hemoglobin test, I'm telling you, one week of this, and you come back with perfect hemoglobin. One week, it works every time. I've had that happen with three days. 
and perfect hemoglobin, right? I've had that happen in a child, a seven-year-old child, with one chlorophyll drink a day, and her hemoglobin, she had sickle cell, was totally balanced out, right up. So, look in here if you want the answers. The operation manual has every answer that you need to be absolutely help what you have your responsibility to do so remember what i said number one was ask you have not because you ask not two seek you have to do your own research and that the best place to get your research is up here and one of the things that i use for that is joshua 1 8 and that says this book of the law must not stop coming out of your mouth you use it as the answer for everything. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but it, you shall meditate in it. You know what meditate means? Read it, think about it, mumble it. <laughs> Say it over and over and over, ruminate on it, digest it, meditate in it, day and night. That's why I keep the word going into my ears all night, 24 7, so that it goes in subliminally and it comes out without my even knowing that I got it in. Hm. That's the way to go. Good stuff in, good stuff out. Garbage in, garbage out. Must be. So, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Two observe that means you have to analyze it and say no why should i do this observe to do observe to do you meditate analyze so that you can put it into action to do all that is written therein not some you know that people come in and says well i like this program you know, but I don't like this, it tastes so bad. And so they want to take pieces out and throw them out. I said, if you're on my program and you can't do it 100%, thank you very much, go somewhere else. Because I know that if you don't do all, then the little pieces that you don't do correctly are open doors for all sort of poisons or toxins to get into the system and bow up the whole balance. So that is why it's so important to do all. So this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. And then you shall observe to do all, all that is written therein. Then you will make your way prosperous then you will have good success. So when you look at other person's success, you don't know what they have put in. And this applies to every area of life. People look on and they say, boy, Sherry, I want to look like you when I become your age. Oh, I want to have skin like yours. I want to have this like yours. Are you willing to put in two hours every morning with the book? Are you willing to put in two hours every day on the body? That's what I do. And any day I don't do that, I don't read the rewards. That's my choice. If I want X, I know how to get it. If it's less important on occasions, I don't do any body work at all. It gets less. But I cannot on any occasion, I don't care what is happening, not spend my time with the book because that's where I get all my information for the day. And I'm telling you, it's exciting because I get Exposed to stuff that I just never knew was in the book. Guess what I researched today. How 
to buy a home, a beautiful home, and how to decorate it with the best furniture and furnishings. You know where I got it from? The book. So guess what I did? I did a program on that with all the scriptures. I got over 25 scriptures from the book on how to buy a house, how to get out of foreclosure, how to furnish it with the best stuff in the book. You know, when I found out that the book has in everything, I remember I was very much into when I was studying finishing school stuff and you know, makeup and how to walk properly and how to, what knife and fork to use and how to say how do you do and when you're with royalty and how to enjoy yourself when you're on the beach. I wanted to find out what does this book have to do with it? And that was when I started this company called Destiny. I saw a research arm that looks for anything you need in the book. It doesn't matter. One day, I said, somebody came to me, well, computers were not, re were not invented when the book was there. What does it have to do with computers? What does it have to say about computers? Let me finish about the issue about what I was researching in the book. Then I'll tell you about the computers. Oh, this is very important, you know. It may not it means that you have to do your research. That is the point that I'm trying to drive home here. You must do your research. So when I was doing this fix up yourself together and what have you, I went to Esther. And I remember they put her through this protocol to get her ready for the king. And I said, well, I have to go and research what the protocol was. And I did. You know, there are some other supporting documents like Josephus and you know, all of those writings that will show you all the other details that are not in this book, which are not part of this book, but are supporting information. And I went and researched and I saw all the things that I must do. All the plants I must use to give me the right coloration here. Because remember, you know, those people down in the side of the world used to have beautiful olive complexions, right? They were not that color or that color, right? So that was the issue about the makeup and the making the best of your temple. And then the computer thing. I remember somebody who, when computers were just coming, I think it must be about 12 years ago, or 15, whatever. They came to me and said, well, I want to be a computer programmer, and I don't see anything about that in the world. Right away, it just popped up in my mind when I was doing the, 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 the research for the word that they now use for computers from the Hebrew. Because, you know, when you have a new invention, they usually just take a word from a all the word and sort of switch it around and add on a little end and beginning they call it suffix and prefix and call it the thing or name the thing. So when I looked and I started the word search now and so on, computers, the word for computers is the same word for God wrote with his finger on the tablets of stone. When he was giving the law, the same Hebrew word. So it means God computer generated the words onto the tablets of stone with his finger. So do watch your face. I know that anything I need to find is in there. That's why number two step is after you ask, you gotta seek. And seek means researching spending time to look for it yourself and I'm here to tell you all the stuff that I have given you will never become yours until you research it for yourself or you put it into practice for yourself so don't take what I say be like the Bereans 
they searched the scriptures to see with what the apostles and the angel said was true. So that's step number two. Step number three is not. So you ask, you seek, and know you're not. Not is about persistence. You're not stopping to knock until the door opens. Right? And so it is so important that you have step number three in this little acronym here. A-S-K. Knock. Knock is persistence. You ever hear somebody at the door, you don't want to open the door? Knock, knock, knock. You ever hear the children outside and you tell them, look, it's private time now for daddy and me. Go to your room. Knock, 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 knock. And you need to make sure that you don't come out of the room. Because children must understand that parents can be the only be the best parents when they are the best lovers. So that's a part of another program. But the best lovers make the best parents. So don't give the time, more time to the children than you give to your husband and your wife. Or else, dog eat the supper. That becomes the most important thing in your life. So busy executives, pastors, those who have important jobs, remember that your family comes way before your job, your career, whatever it is, even your calling in life from the Creator, His plan is for you to keep things in the right order. First, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right? And it was off screen, but it's all right. And <laughs> then you love yourself the way your Creator loved you. And then after that, you love others the way you love yourself. But you only can do that when you love yourself the way your Creator loves you. Unconditionally and everlasting. So, that's why persistence is a part of the reaping process and part of what you have to put in as you pay as you enter. Ask, seek, knock. Now, why are you going to be persistent? Because if you don't stop knocking, the door has to open. Why? Because this book says that any word that goes out of the mouth of God, that's the mouth of God, you know? that's the mouth of the Creator, cannot return without accomplishing what it was sent out to do. And this is why we have to speak the word. Remember we spoke about neurolinguistic programming? That's it. You've got to speak the word. Spoken words have creative force. And that is why when you speak negative over your children, they're going to do exactly what you say. Why we turn all bad just like the father? That's not what you want for your child. So as your child comes in and does horrible things, you speak over them. You're a mighty man of God. You are going to conquer X, Y, and Z. I remember how I used that on a little boy in my Sunday school class. We used to have these um, dance sessions before the class. So everybody would come and dance and, you know, just play and throw down themselves and fight each other. We just sort of watch out of the corner of our eyes. But this is a part of getting rid of the nervous energy. It's a system that works. And so it's called here, Sidewalk Sunday School. And it's a system that I teach in different denominations to teachers who do Sunday School all around the island and outside the island as well. Now, this system means that you need to, first of all, get rid of the excess energy before the class so that they are quiet and they can pay attention. Secondly, during the class, you have to make sure that you constantly engage them by letting them be your assistants and facilitators. But getting back to this little boy at the beginning of the class, during the session, he took a pencil and stick the other one until blood came. And the other one came screaming up to me and saying to me, 
Say you're sorry, or the key is coming up. He said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And say, I will not do it again. I will not do it again. I said, Okay, send him off to the sick bay now. So he goes off to the sick bay. And I sat and I talked to him and I said, Do you know something? You are a Trojan, you know. He said, Trojan. I said, He said, What is a Trojan? I said, You're a great fighter. Right? I said, you ever hear of Muhammad Ali? And when I said that, he looked at me blank. Oh, I am 50 odd, and this child at the time was uh, six, eight. And he said, Huh? I said, Who's your favorite fighter? He said, Bruce Lima. I'm standing with some karate chop. I got all on the floor and both of us had a big karate fight, right? I said, You are good. I've got to get you into a class, right? So you always find the good out of the bad situation that the person was involved in and you try and train that capability so that not only are they become better at it, but they learn how to control it. So it's important for us to understand that when we have the responsibility to Own children's light. They can't speak the wrong thing. Do we need another break? Or shall we just flow to the end? I think we will flow to the end. Right. I am here to tell you that it works when you distract the person with something that they can do well when they have done something incorrect is how you modify the behavior. We spoke about that in a previous program. When you slap a child across the face inappropriately and you want to correct that behavior, what to do? But moving right along, persistence is very, very important. And whatever information you want is in this operations manual. So make sure that you speak only. What is in here? If you are taking what is speaking out of here, then it must happen because that word, out of God's mouth, cannot come back without accomplishing what is sent forth to do. It cannot come back empty. It must do what it was sent out to do. And we need to know that we have been given the same capabilities. Consequently, when you speak about something, it is going to happen because it goes out there and gathers all the other airwaves that are saying the same thing. All the other spirits. So when you speak something good, it goes out there and carries all of God's good intentions about that situation. Attaches itself to it and then it comes back and it just manifests. It may take two weeks. It may take two months. It may take two years. Or in my case, when I spoke on something, it took 20 years because that's what I spoke. I said, I'm not going to stop praying for this person, even if it takes me 20 years. And believe you me, 20 years to the day, what I prayed for happened. So learn to keep on your mouth. When it happened, I said, oh my goodness, it hit me that I caused it to stay so long. So you have to say, this is going to be a quick work. It's like when I decide that I'm going to go all 100% for my creator and love him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, I add on to the end. I say, you know I'm a stubborn person. I say, you know I was a stubborn person, Lord. But guess what? I want a quick work. And so every time I ask for something, I ask for a quick work. Right? 
because that is also out of the book. So I just attach it on to what I want. And then after I got a little more mature, I said, well, I don't always want a quick one for very long. I want it in your time because sometimes you become too quick. I am not ready for it. So I am here to tell you that your creator knows what is best for you. So ask for exactly what you want and then make sure that you have an overrider at the end. If it is not good for me and you have something better, then you can substitute it. So that's what I always do. I ask for everything I want immediately and I put a little overrider on the end. Because guess what that does? It orients your whole mindset. You don't have to go to say, I wonder if this is right. I wonder if so I should I do this. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I just ask for everything. That's why I have so much. <laughs> because I ask for everything. And then I have two overrides on the end. Anything you cannot do for me, please don't give it to me. Right? I give you executive privilege. And any door I am not to set, step on, step through, even though I'm running towards it, shut the door. So you see, when I reach up on a stone wall, every time I say, Thank you, Lord, for shutting that door. I have something to tell you. I wrote an email to a friend of mine. I was in a very euphoric mood. Let's just put it that way. And I poured out all sorts of things in the email. And it was 2 o'clock one morning. And after I read it, I said, mm -hmm. I'm going to send this email. And I go so I said, send. All of a sudden come up on the stream. Oops. There has been a, a mistake or an error. Oh, oops. There has been an error in your sending this email. And it cannot be sent. I go back in and I do it again and I send it. Oops. There is an error. As soon as I get this morning, I call my secretary and say, do you know how to retrieve this thing? I said, as soon as you come in, you need to retrieve it so I can send it. Well, my dear, when she come in and she retrieve it, all I see in the email is half of a line. Everything has to erase. Then it hit me. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you for erasing this email. Because when I sleep and wake up, realize that it may not have been the best thing to have said at this time in this season. So you see, hope got up your back all the time. When you have an intention to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you're gone clear. Even when you make stupid mistakes. So, as we close off today, I want to be Whoa! What a thunder! That means we have the rain coming up, and I love the rain. So, just to recap, what you need to do, pay as you enter. Don't be afraid to pay, because let me tell you something. When you pay up front, it's like sowing a corn, a seed of corn. You're going to get thousands of corn grains as a result. So, pay the sooner you pay. The more you get at the end. So don't be afraid to put in your contribution so that you can be sure of the results. So remember, it is his plan, he will bring it to pass, and you can proceed with shalom. Rest. Remember that that's the most important thing. To love your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Learn from him how to love yourself. Then you will love your neighbor as yourself, and then you will have peace where you can just relax knowing that everything is in perfect, upright order. Nothing missing, nothing broken. So I want to share with you at this point our next program that is coming up. So stay tuned, don't go away. The next one is just as good because we'll be having me, Haley, and he's going to interview a Donald 
for a retired NBA star who played for the Golden State Warriors. He's from St. Vincent, so he's one a week from the Caribbean. So stay tuned and listen to this exciting interview. Bye. From my oops, oops, oops. Coordinate. And we're going to have a wonderful day. Oh, yes. I know. It's got to be As if he's saying something to me <laughs> Sitting on the limb of a tree Giving me a sound of sweet melody I guess he's trying to tell me something 